We will dovetail into education. In fact, we're going to be talking about non-formal education. Sometime back in 1989 is when it was introduced to serve under the Ministry of Education. That was supposed to provide some um, you know, education to adults, to young people above the age of 15 and to persons living with disabilities so that they can also learn the English language, learn to read and write in their local dialect and also learn some numeracy skills and skills training as well so they can contribute effectively to nation building. And then sometime in 2019, it was announced that a bill was being developed so that we can, um, you know, set up an agency still under the education ministry that will take care of non-formal education and literacy. And so October 2019 is when um, it was established, the Complementary Education Agency. Now, the bill was passed in 2019, and then that gave rise to the agency. And now today, we're going to learn a bit more about the work that they're doing, because again, they've continued with the non-formal education and it's time for us to get to know a lot more of what they plan to do moving forward. Joining us in the studio, we have Priscilla Awimbe Kusa. She's the head of communications at the Accra Metro office. And Samuel Painso Edubuafo is a district coordinator, complementary education agency of the Ministry of Education, also the Accra Metro office. Good morning to both of you. Good Thank morning. you for joining us. Thank I'll start off with you first, Samuel. So give us a brief background of the, um, the, the policy and the agency as well. Okay, so uh, for, thank you for your viewers. For with the agency, mm. what the agency is doing now, like you, you said in your submission, formerly we were looking at people with the ages of 15 and 45 and above. Mm. But the agency is telling us that anyone who qualifies for education, we should take care of that person. Okay. So agency is looking at functional literacy, mm -hmm. looking at occupational skill development, and then CBE, Complementary Basic Education. Okay. So with the Complementary Basic Education, the agency is now giving us uh, the chance to look at GSS dropouts, SS dropouts. So we could also give them training. Mm. So they write and then move on to have further their education. Okay. And formally with the non-formal education, that is the literacy aspect. This time we are complementing genius. So whatever genius is doing, Mm -hmm. We are also doing it, but we are looking at community specifics. Oh. So when we enter into a community and we find out that they need, let's say, KG, so we will groom them and then create a pathway. Mm -hmm. So when the time is due for them to, let's say, enter class one, and there is a school in that uh, community, community yes. then, then we give them to genius. Oh, I see. But, I mean, we could have still done this without setting up an agency necessarily, couldn't we? No, because this time, you see, we don't want it to sound like uh, what GS is doing. We are also doing it. So the agency is there to create a pathway mm. so that when we train, for instance, we are not doing remedials okay. for BC and SSE, okay. but the agency is giving us that mandate. Okay. to look out for dropouts from GSS mm -hmm. and then SS so that we will train them, register them when they write their exams and they pass. Mm -hmm. Those that would have the chance to enter into senior high, they do. Okay. And with the SS, those that we train and pass and enter into the uh, university level, they also do. What happens to the adults as well? Are you still catering for the yes. adults who have not been educated? Yes, we are still doing functional literacy. Okay, okay. So like you said, with the functional literacy, we are looking at reading, writing, and then arithmetic. Okay. So those adults, because they are already in business, mm -hmm. so we'd help them to be able to perform well in whatever they are doing. Mm -hmm. That is where the functional literacy aspect comes to play. Okay. And aside the functional literacy aspect, we are also looking at occupational skill development, mm. which we term as income generating activities. Mm -hmm. There are adults who join functional literacy class who are not employed. Okay. So through the functional literacy class, they gain employable skills so they can be able to fend for themselves. Okay, let me bring Priscilla in because he talked about community specific interventions just so that everybody can be educated. Mm -hmm. But for the adults and for anybody who may be watching now, if they want to get educated, uh, is that also community specific? Do they have to reach out to you? How do you select these adults? And how do they benefit from this education? How long is the class and all that? Tell me about it. Okay, thank you for the opportunity and good morning to your viewers. Mm. Yes, um, the adult literacy is also community sensitive. We enter into the community to engage the opinion leaders and those who matter. 
to help us to identify non-literate adults. Okay. Yes. To, for us to be able to get classes for them, mm. to enroll them, and the duration is a nine-month period. Okay. Where we take them through the functional literacy and numeracy skills, and our system is in three steps. Mm -hmm. We have the beginners, the advanced, and the intermediate. Okay. Yes. So when we take you through the nine months period, we assess you and see which level you fit into. If you are okay to move to the next level, we push you there. So the, so the nine months is the beginner's level? All is nine months. Every oh. level is nine months. Every level is nine months? Yes. Yeah, but you're saying that after the nine months, that's what will determine if you move them to intermediary or to... That's what I'm saying. That's so for everyone who comes in, they start from the beginners, the, the nine beginners. months. Okay. okay. It depends on how... Your, our assessment, when we assess you and we realize that you are a beginner, for instance, there are some adults who have never been to school at all. Mm -hmm. So those adults are taken to the beginner's class. We have school dropout. Yeah. Those who drop out from the primary school level mm -hmm. and all that. Mm -hmm. Those people, we cannot teach them the letters of the alphabet from okay. the beginning. Yes. Because they so should have they, an, yes, an idea. Yes. Okay. So we take them to the next level. And every level is nine months. Every so let's just say you start from the beginner's level. That's nine times three. Yes. So 21 months. Yes. And then you come out to what certificate? Is there a particular certificate you give them? Yes. What level certificate is that? Depending on their level, when we assess them and they fit into the JHS level, ah, yes, okay. we take them there. And when they are able to write the BEC, they get the BEC certificate. Okay. But if it is the adult functional literacy, we have a special certificate from the ministry for them. That's what I was asking. So what yes. certificate is that? That's supposed to equip them to be able to run businesses yes. and to carry on with their lives. Yes. How do you fund all this? Because if you're moving from one community to the other, let's say one community has about 100 people that you need to help. Who funds this? Okay. So you see, uh, non-formal education, formally, Mm. It's a subsidiary of Ministry of Education, mm. so funding comes from the ministry. Okay. But before the funds get to the district level, mm -hmm. you can't have anything to run the offices. Mm. Why so? So the money that comes, it, it's something small. Okay. I could... Not that people are, you know, keeping the money yes. for their personal yes. benefits. Uh -huh. so it's very little money yes. that comes to the that district. To the district How much are we looking at per district? So I... I for 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 the first quarter we were giving 120 ghana cities a district yes first to, quarter first quarter to to run the office so that tells you how uh how because like i said you see the ministry and it's not the fault from our headquarters Who's fault it's because you? the money that comes uh -huh. to the division that is what in accra alone we have about uh, 21 districts mm -hmm. offices in Accra. Yeah. And all the regions, all the uh, regions that we have in Ghana, we have offices there. Mm -hmm. So it is this money that will be given to all the district offices. So, so the whole Accra, 2, uh, 2,520 Ghana cities for 21 districts. Yes. To educate people. So, so we end up using, and honestly speaking, we have staff who are dedicated. So sometimes the rounds that they do, they do it with their own resources. So we are using your good platform to reach out to companies wow. that non-formal education is there to help. And now that we've been given an agency status, they can also come down to help us. It doesn't matter what they are. It doesn't matter how big it is. Mm. So we would plead with them. That we are dedicated to do the work, mm -hmm. but we need resources that would help us to do the work and do it well. Does the agency come with teachers or you hire teachers separately? So the agency will be looking at facilitators from our end. Who and are then also paid? Who are also paid. From and this one, 20 cities per district? No, the, that one is, to, is for us to run the office. So for they are a whole the, quarter? Yes. Have you raised concerns about this to the Ministry of Education? Yes. Because if that is your mother, um, you know, sector, ministry, sector ministry, they should be able to do better for the districts. No? Yes. We have, and they are aware. 
Previously, we were being funded by the World Bank. Okay. But they came in for one decade. Mm. And it came in two phases. That's five years and the second five years. But after, because it was time bound, mm -hmm. after they left and they are now sponsoring a different institution. Okay. So, as my colleague said, we are using this platform to solicit for funds from benevolent individuals and maybe institutions. But that's what I'm saying. So, the minister is aware, the ministry is aware. Yeah, aware. Yes. Are they making any plans to increase the budgetary yes. allocation? Yes, yes, we hope the agency would bring some of these uh, lapses. Okay. Because we would definitely would have a board, and the board would direct us as to what to do. Mm. So, we are hoping that with the agency coming in, I think things will, will normalize. But for, for now... Mm, for some of these adults that you educate, some of them have businesses that they run. Yes. And so they are sort of well-to-do, at least at that level. Have you thought of probably charging them a little amount of money? Or do you even do that in the first place to provide that education? No. It's completely free. free. It's completely even free. Even for those who can afford? Yes, yes, even for those who can afford. Should we not start thinking of maybe you know, making some of these people pay as well as a means of raising some funds? So I, I believe the agency would see to all these lapses. Okay. So that uh, those that would be, for, for us in AME, what we do is, even with the adult literacy, we ask them to pick forms. And the forms come with a fee. Because it's free, people don't value it. So mm. if the person is picking a form for even five cities, mm -hmm. So you are, you are looking at this or a commitment level. So mm -hmm. I parted away this amount yeah. to be uh, educated. So that alone will keep the person in class. Other than that, it's free. So mm -hmm. some, of, some don't even value what we are doing because mm. it's free. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. It's, it's very worrying. I'm actually quite surprised. And I do hope and call on benevolent Ghanaians to support because... Again, we're providing education for people who may not have had the opportunity uh, to get educated. And so please support the agency uh, whichever way that you can. For, for the young ones as well, again, it's totally free, right? Mm -hmm. But if they have to register for an exam, I know that last year government paid for the registration of BC and yes. YC. But then if that doesn't happen, then it falls on the agency to pay all that? Yes. Hmm. And, and I believe because we don't have a board in place now. Mm. But just as it is done at the formal level, I believe when we get them and train them and it's time for them to write their exams, government will take their registration fee upon itself, just as okay. it's done with uh, the formal school. I I'm just a little inquisitive. These teachers who are facilitators, how much are they paid on a monthly basis? Oh, they are, they are staff. They, they are they are being paid from the consolidated fund. So okay. they, they are okay Okay. Uh -huh. Even though I would say they are okay now, but at least for now. What, what to run the office, the allocation that we as district coordinators or regional coordinators need to use to run the office, that is what we are lacking. Ideally, how much is spent to run the office? I mean, budgetary allocation is 120 Ghana cities. We know that's woefully inadequate, but how much do you usually spend to run the office? So, for instance, I, I will speak for Accra Metro. So everything that we do, we do with our personal money. So for even my uh, coming here. Yeah, yeah. We came with Your our personal money. money. Yes. yes. We came here with our own so, money. So that is how uh, we are really suffering at the district level. In a quarter, yes. how much do you spend? Expenditures against the budget that's so allocated. I, I, I could say that in a quarter, I spent more than uh, 2,000 Ghana cities. Running the office. Running the office. Okay, and that came from personal funds, yes. individual personal pockets. Funds, yeah. Yes. So what, you contribute to run? You see, like we are doing now. So Priscilla took it upon herself to go around distributing letters. Okay. You see, and then when we are called, I tried to find out how we can come to the studio. Reports, writing, and everything. There are officers who do not even have computers and printers to work with. When you're traveling to the communities, do they provide you vehicles? No, 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 no for now. We only have few vehicles for our head office. Okay, so staff. you rely on that to travel to the communities? No. For the districts, we are not given cars at all. So when you're going, what do you do? So what we do we is... Take our own car. Because, with your own money? Yes. So what we do, to add to what Priscilla said, what we do is, because 
we have that uh, cordial relationship with the assemblies. Mm -hmm. For Accra Metro, what we have done is to write, so you know AMV is made up of three sub-metros. Mm -hmm. So we've written letters to them. For the community entry that we'll be doing, mm. we'll be relying on their uh, pickups okay. with PA system for us. But if you enter a community where the assembly do not have anything of that sort, then mm -hmm. it means that you would have to provide the means of entering into that community. Mm. And that comes with a lot of challenges. Wow. Okay. Well, how do people get in touch with you if they want to support in case they're watching? So our office is at the old assembly, AMA assembly, behind the Bank of, of Ghana. Hmm. That is where the Accra Metro office is. And in all the districts, to their offices are either within the assembly premises hmm. or outside the assembly premises. Okay. All right. So please get in touch with them. And if you want to help, I hope that you would want to help, you can support them. So they provide education for uh, people who unfortunately may have dropped out of school at a point, uh, never got access to education and, you know, are benefiting from this process as well. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. you have any final words to say? Okay. Yes. Before we leave, um, we have our upcoming International Literacy Day, which is coming off at the... Bono East region, and we'll have the regional minister, the minister for education, the chiefs, and other dignitaries in attendance. Mm. And it will be on the theme Complementary Education for Human Development in COVID 19 Era. Okay. The role of digital literacy. All right. Thank you so much. Priscilla Wimbekusa is the head of communications. And uh, Samuel Painso Edubwafo is a district coordinator for the Complementary Education Agency of the Ministry of Education. 